once again, good morning. Good to see each of you here this morning. One quick announcement that I forgot to mention. Um, we want to remember that the State Fair is coming up. It's, what, three weeks, give or take. Um, we do have congregations, other congregations, who come and, and work during the day, and, and we are thankful to those brethren who do. Uh, but we here at the local congregation, we strive to fill, fill the booth at, in the evenings, uh, beginning at 5 and uh, going through the close of the state fair in the evenings at 9. If you are able to go out and, and help, we would encourage you to do so, get with Jim or myself. And also, uh, if you are perhaps uncomfortable uh, doing so by yourself, maybe you've never done it, and you'd like someone to go with you again, get with us, we can make sure someone is out with you and is there uh, helping and, and kind of showing you the ropes, uh, showing you the way that, that things are done there, and, and it's, not, it's not strenuous, it's not hard, um, but we would encourage you to uh, consider this and, and um, get involved with that, that work. It's air conditioned. It is air conditioned, and, and actually, uh, quick note, uh, the booth there is in uh, one of the best spots you stand just in the right spot in that booth, you won't ever get hot in the least bit. You might be cold, some of us probably here, I won't call any names out, uh, that get cold real easily, and, and uh, you might very well get cold, depending on what part of that booth you're standing in. Uh, but, but again, it, it is uh, an important work, and, and if you can help, we would encourage you to do so. I would ask you to bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we come here this morning to worship you. We pray that we will do so in a pleasing manner. Father, we pray that, that you will find our praise of you, our worship of you to be acceptable, be pleasing. Father, we pray that we may study your word. We are thankful for your word that teaches us the way that we should go. We pray that we will learn these things, apply them to our lives, live as you would have us to live. Father, we pray for your guidance, for your strength, for your wisdom. We pray these things humbly in Christ's most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Miracles. Milagros. We're going to be looking at this this morning, and it is a, a subject that we should consider one that we should think on. I must admit that sometimes you, you, you look at subjects, evangelism and, and such, and these things are exciting to me. I feel energetic. They're, they're let's go do this. Let's, let's get involved in all. And then you look at, them, at miracles, and I, I hate to use the word technical, uh, but, but we are looking at some things that are, are here's what the Bible teaches, very doctrinal in, in issues. In, in, in point and of course important for us to understand because there are many who misunderstand this subject, who do not uh, understand what the Bible teaches on this matter. We want to define what we are talking about when we speak about miracles because as we're going to see, there are many who misunderstand what we are talking about. They misdefine the word. They mis uh, understand what it what it in fact means for our purposes this morning we need to understand that we are talking about that which the force of nature cannot produce it is supernatural forces lo que la fuerza de la naturaleza no puede producir fuerzas sobrenaturales my Spanish obviously is not that great, and I won't try to read everything, but, but of course you can follow along there. But we do need to understand that we are talking about, and the key word here is supernatural. Supernatural, brothers and sisters. It is something beyond what is normal. And we see here that a baby, though often called so, 
is not a miracle. Now, I say that as a father who, who is the proud father of a, a wonderful little girl. And I remember the day she was born and, and, and what a wonderful blessing she is and, and was even then and all. But a baby is not either in birth or just the baby him or herself is not a miracle. However, raising the person who has been dead for four days is a miracle. Jim was talking and mentioned Lazarus this morning. And, and as we will look in a few moments, we see that Jesus performed a miracle when He called Lazarus out of that grave. And, and that, in fact, is a miracle. And we need to understand that that is the case. I want us to consider this morning, are miracles real? Son reales los milagros. And do they exist today? Existen hoy en día. Do they exist today? And these are two questions I want us to answer this morning because as we can see, there are people who are wrong on both of these matters. People who do not believe that miracles are a real thing. It's just not real, they say. And then others who who misunderstand whether they are real or, or excuse me, whether they exist or whether they happen today. Are miracles real? Son reales los milagros. Are they real? In John chapter 2, we see the answer to this question. We get a picture of this. And I want to say, I, a lot of the time I put the, the chapter, the verses and all, the text up here. Some I do, but in some cases, such as one, such as John 2, 1 through 11, Juan, capítulo 1 al 11, we see that these texts are rather lengthy, and so we're not going to put them up on the, the uh, projector, but... I would encourage you to look at these, and in fact, we're not really going to read through these completely. We see that he turns water to wine, agua a vino. And now we can get into, and we're not going to today, we can get into a discussion of what he actually turned it into. Was it uh, wine as we think of today, or, or grape juice, or whatever? But for today's purposes, brothers and sisters, it simply doesn't matter what he turned it into. He turned it into something it wasn't. It was water, and whenever they dipped it out, it was wine. It was, it was something other than what they, had, uh, they knew it was. They had filled it with water. And for our purposes, again, we need to understand that. We need to see that He performed a miracle. Brothers and sisters, I don't care whether we're talking about grape juice or we're talking about wine as we think of it today, or whether we're talking about milk. I like milk. Milk and cookies. Um, you know. If, if, if I filled a barrel here, if I filled some large barrels here with water, and then Jim over here dipped it out and it was milk, we would understand some, there had something had occurred, a miracle had taken place. And here Jesus does just that. They are out of out of wine and, and what does his mother tell them? Tell them. Do whatever he says. He tells them, go fill these pots, go fill these uh, barrels, we might say, and, and, and fill them to the brim. Dip out and go take to the governor. Go take to the to the one who is in charge. And brothers and sisters, when he tasted of it, it was not water, was it? He performed a miracle. In John chapter 11, we see, and, and again, we talked about, we, we referenced there about, John, about uh, Jesus raising Lazarus. Lazarus was dead. And we note, brothers and sisters, that he in fact, as was mentioned in Bible class this morning, he was dead for four days. In fact, his sister, if you recall, what did his sister say? Lord, he stinks by now. He's been laying there dead for four days. By now, he stinks. Brothers and sisters, we know we're talking about a man here. 
If you've ever had a beloved pet and your pet dies, now some people can, you know, preserve stuff, whatever you want to say, their pets, but many of us, most of us, probably take them out and bury them somewhere. After I've buried my pet, as much as I love my pet, after four days, I don't want to go dig up that pet. We understand what his sister was talking about here. And yet, brothers and sisters, Jesus said those words, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of the grave. Interesting note, I've mentioned this before, but, but uh, Brother Marshall Keeble, and I've actually, you can look it up on the internet, I was listening to it the other day in one of his sermons, perhaps in more, but I know in one of his sermons, and I was listening to it, spoke about why he said, Lazarus, come forth. Because had Jesus simply said, come forth, everybody in that graveyard would have gotten up and come out of the graves. Jesus said, come forth, because he, he said, Lazarus, come forth, because he was calling Lazarus out of that grave. Brothers and sisters, we understand that, that individual coming forth out of that grave, this was a miracle. We see these, and we can look at many other examples throughout the Bible. Jim mentioned several in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we, we see how that these are examples of miracles. We see these things being performed and occurring. Again, what is the key word in understanding a miracle? Supernatural. Something which is beyond the norm. Brothers and sisters, we all have lost loved ones. Those we care about, and as much as we'd like to see them again, we understand they're not just getting up out of the grave. I think about my dad passing, and, and it's been a little over three years now. And brothers and sisters, I have no doubt if Jesus was walking this earth and he, he called forth for my dad to come out of that grave, he'd get up. Three years later, he'd get up and come out of that grave. In fact, someday, as Jesus points out about the resurrection, and, and, and Lazarus' sister says, well, I know, you know, he's talking about Lazarus is going to be raised, and she says, well, I know he's going to be raised in the resurrection. We're all going to come forth. We're all, as again, as we talked about in Bible class, we're going to hear the voice of, of the Lord, and, and we're going to come forth. But here, Lazarus, on that day heard the voice of, of the Lord and he came out of that grave. We see, brothers and sisters, that they are in fact real. Miracles do exist. They are a real thing. And you can go and you read of example after example within the pages of the Bible. You can see how that they have occurred, that they do exist. They are real. Vimos que son reales. But brothers and sisters, do they exist today? Or, or perhaps we should say, do they occur today? Pero existen hoy en día? Do they exist? Or do they occur today? To help us understand, let us examine their purpose. We see in Mark chapter 16 and verse 20. Mark 16 and verse 20. We see here uh, the text teaches us the very purpose of the miraculous. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So what was the purpose of this, brothers and sisters? The purpose of it was to confirm, confirma, confer, confirmando. We see here that, that that is the purpose of the miraculous. In Acts chapter 14, verse 3, Hechos capítulo 15, 14, excuse me, 14, y versículo 13. Acts chapter 14 and verse 3. Again, we see the, the purpose of 
the miraculous. There in verse 3, Long time therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of His grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. We see, brothers and sisters, Mandos huesen hechos por las manos de ellos. These miraculous abilities were given to these individuals that they might confirm what they were saying. Because they did not have what we have. If we want to know God's will, what do we do? We pick up our Bibles. We read them. We study them. We, we meditate upon them. We consider what God's Word teaches. Last week, Brother Salvador talked about studying, enseñar, studying the Word of God. And, and it is important for us to, to do so, for us to consider these, these things and to, to know what it says. But they didn't have, at least in the New Testament, they didn't have the New Testament completed and written at that time. So how did they know what they needed to know? Because these inspired Men, these men who had these miraculous abilities, could do so, could speak through uh, the, the uh, through inspiration, that they could perform these miracles that that in fact confirmed what uh, they were uh, saying. Again, they confirm confirm Oran. We see, brothers and sisters, that that's what. The miracles were for. So when we understand that that is what they were for, then the only question is, is, is that purpose still in existence today? And, and of course, we've already considered that, already been thinking about that. Notice again that the apostles, they could do them. The apostle could perform the miraculous and see that many, in fact, could not. Put with me in Acts chapter 8. Hechos capítulo 8. And we see here, brothers and sisters, beginning, and we're not going to read this entire thing, but beginning in verse 5, versículo 5, we see, of course, Philip there. He goes down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ to them. And we see how they convert various ones. They convert many people there. Notice beginning in verse 14. Versículo 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost, for as yet He was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And Simon, notice in verse 18, versículo 10 y ocho, and when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also, that, also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Now, hear what he's talking about, brothers and sisters, in receiving the Holy Ghost is receiving those miraculous abilities. Receiving the ability to do these miracles. Now, Philip was there and Philip could perform miracles, because he did so. But they sent the apostles down, specifically Peter and John, they sent them down. Why? So that they could lay their hands on them and impart to them these miraculous abilities. Why didn't Philip just do it? Because he couldn't. <clears throat> he could not pass these things on. The apostles had to 
impart them, and others could not give others the ability to perform miracles. Brothers and sisters, we consider again, we think about what their purpose was to confirm. We consider that the apostles were the only ones who could then impart these miraculous abilities. And brothers and sisters, we ought to be able to get a picture today of whether or not they exist now. Whether or not that is that they occur today. Because certainly we consider as far as the, how they were able to get these miraculous abilities. The apostles aren't around today. I know there are those who, who still claim, well, John didn't die. John's still running around here, the Apostle John. But that's not biblically accurate. Brothers and sisters, as there are no apostles to impart these miraculous abilities, then there can be no one today who has these miraculous abilities. Notice further in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Premier Corinthians, capítulo 13 y versículo 8 al 10. Now the King James Version here uses the word charity. The word is love. That's what it's talking about. Now for today's purpose we'll use the word love. Love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Two questions, brothers and sisters. What is that which is in part? And what is that which is perfect? If we can answer those two questions, we'll have an idea as to when these things, because Paul here by inspiration says they are to cease, when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. So let us consider that and we'll understand what is to cease and in fact when it is to cease. Brothers and sisters, that which is in part is miracles. Lo que es en parte es milagros. And we see this because in the very text that we just read, what does Paul list off? He lists off those things that in fact are miraculous. Prophecies, they shall fail. Tongues, they shall cease. Knowledge. You know, I, I had some, I, a note here, someone who, who would argue, well, miracles haven't ceased because knowledge, we have knowledge. It's a misunderstanding of what knowledge is talking about there. It's not talking about do I know how to play an instrument? I learned to play, play the trumpet. I know how to play the, the trumpet. I have knowledge of music. I have knowledge of the trumpet. I went to college and studied uh, political science, studied uh, English, studied various things. I have knowledge in those things because I studied them. Well, Paul's not talking about that. Paul's talking about miraculous knowledge. Just as he talks about prophesying miraculously, telling people what is the case, what is going to take place, talking about tongues. And again, here's, here's a subject we could spend hours on talking about, trying to get straight what so many are teaching falsely about. What is he talking about when he talks about tongues? He's talking about human languages. He's talking about, for example, we can say English or Spanish. Brothers and sisters, they could, though they didn't know a word of Spanish, they could stand up and, pro and speak Spanish fluently. Obviously, I don't do so very well. And I've studied Spanish some. But brothers and sisters, they spoke these languages miraculously, having never studied them, having never learned them. They just could speak them. And, and so when we see these things, we see in context that that which is in part, he, he talks about these 
miracles, verse 8, and then what does he say? For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. We do these things in part. But then when that which is perfect is come, that then that which is in part shall be done away. So that which is in part is the miraculous, and that, brothers and sisters, which is perfect is the completed word of God. Some people say it's Jesus coming back for his kingdom. Again, a misunderstanding of, of Bible teaching. But brothers and sisters, that which is perfect, the perfect law of liberty, the Bible says, that which is perfect is in fact the completed word of God. Our Bibles, what we have today, we have the completed Word of God. I don't need Jim over here to stand up and start teaching me, telling me uh, as far as some miraculous ability, telling me what God wants me to know. I can pick up my Bible. Now, I may need Jim or I may need someone to help guide me through the written Word. I, I may not understand something. I, I may open up my Bible and find a text and say, well, I don't understand that. Jim, will you help me with this? Help me to see better. Help me to understand this. But brothers and sisters, I don't need Jim or, or anyone else, and you don't need me to stand up here and tell you something that is not found here in the Bible. There are people who try that. Amazing how often when they do that what they're telling you is in contradiction with what this Bible says. Isn't that interesting? Brothers and sisters, miracles have ceased. Los milagros han cesado. These things have ceased. They don't occur today. We, we know miracles are a real thing, but they do not happen today. And yet, we see so many people running around saying, oh, this miracle took place. This, oh, my, my baby was born. What a miracle. No. Jesus' birth was a miracle, brothers and sisters. And as, to my knowledge, biblically, as I understand what the Bible teaches, He is the only one ever born miraculously. And, and we hear many other things. There's many things that have happened that are wonderful, that are, we might say, extraordinary. Sometimes that we can't explain how they took place because we don't have the knowledge to, that we understand those things. But brothers and sisters, those supernatural abilities. Now, does that mean God is somehow lesser than He was before? Not at all. If it was God's will, if it was within His purpose to, to perform a miracle today, I have no doubt He would be able to do so. But it is not His purpose. It is not His will. And so we look at these things and we need to understand, again, that these things have ceased. We want to conclude this morning with this question. Consider these things and hopefully they are helpful to you. But have you put on Christ in baptism? Have you obeyed the gospel? Are you a Christian today? If you're not, then I would encourage you to consider what the Bible teaches that you need to do. That you need to hear the word, Romans 10 and verse 17. Because faith comes from hearing God's Word. I would encourage you to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Acts 8, verses 35 through 37. And, and we know, and of course we consider these, these verses and we see what they teach us. How that we, we see here the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. And, and how that he believed, in fact, in Jesus. Jesucristo es el Hijo de Dios. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we see that confession that he, that he made. And of course we see the need to repent of one's sins. Luke 13, verse 3. We see that Jesus says that if we do not repent, we shall perish. 
And then we must confess again as the Ethiopian eunuch did. We must confess Christ. Romans 10 verses 9 and 10. How that we confess with our mouth. And we confess Christ again. Jesucristo es el... Well, the Son of God. And we need to, to understand that. And then we are baptized for the remission of our sins, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. As we see that Peter told them then, there on the day of Pentecost, to do it as, as friends, as I tell you today, that you need to do. If you want to get out of your sins, you need to obey the gospel. You need to put on Christ in baptism. And, and the Bible teaches us that. If you've done so, if not, I would encourage you to do so. Have you lived, should be lived, not lived, but lived faithfully? Because as Christians, if we do not, if we stumble, if we fall, if we sin, we know we can go to God, we can ask Him to forgive us. And He promises, as we see in, in Premier 1, Capitulo 1, in Versiculo 9, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. He promises He will forgive us. You need to respond. We encourage you. We plead with you. Come while we stand and while we sing. Amen.